What is up, booktube? It is Monty. I'm actually in the car a little bit early today. <laughs> um, partially because I read a whole book already. I mean, <laughs> I say I read a whole book. I also noticed I'm doing a lot of laughing. A lot of laughing in these uh, little vlogmas videos. Um, editing Monty has not been amused. So I don't know why current Monty is amused, but it is what it is. So this morning... I got a notification that No One Is Alone by Rachel Vincent was available for me to check out again. So I grabbed the audio. Thank I'm so happy that Libby remembers where you are in a book. It's just like, hey, want to sync? And I was like, yes, yes, I do, actually. So in case y'all don't remember, No One Is Alone by Rachel Vincent was the book where Michaela, her mother, died. She got sent to live with her father, who she had... She knew, like, she knew the man. They spent, like, holidays, a couple holidays and, like, birthdays, things of that nature. He sent, you know, child support. He was in her life present. She knew what the man looked like. Um, but it was revealed to her that he was married and he had three other kids. So the book is a lot about her bonding with these siblings, like, reconciling the 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 father that she knew with the father that he actually is, like, this man coming to terms with her stepmother, who isn't, like a character of an evil woman by any means so it's a lot of family drama we're also there's a plot where one of her brothers her older brother is like maybe has some kind of drug addiction her grandmother is i mean is it her i mean it's it's kind of her, her step grandma like is that a thing white people are complicated to me it's just your grandma but i understand the white people step grandma whatever you want to call the lady uh she's dying she's in hospice and so she's living in the house and so she's getting to know this woman who is like literally on the verge of death she also is dating her half sister to me it's just her sister she's dating her sister's ex-boyfriend ben and her sister is like yo that's like he's not who you think he is and michaela is like you just don't want me to have nice things <laughs> so like there's a lot of mess here and it was just a delightful time i gave this book four to five stars in my little spreadsheet on Goodreads, I'm probably going to give it a four just because I do think that I might have went into this book expecting a little too much based on how much I enjoyed every single lie that I read earlier this year. But every single lie is also tonally a very different book. There's more, there's something of a mystery aspect. There's like, we're trying to get to the bottom of this. And this book is really just a lot of dealing with grief, moving through grief, uh, dealing with life changes, trying to still be a normal person as you navigate this windy road that you're on. And I think it was a good book. I think it's definitely better than all... A lot might be a stretch, right? Do you think that it's better than at least a, a, a plurality? Can we use that word? It's better than a plurality of the YA books that I read. And Rachel Vincent, she does have a very girthy back catalog of like just kind of everything you can imagine. It looks like there's some paranormal urban fantasy stuff. So I might, I might dip my toes in just because I do like how she crafts a narrative. I like how she writes a book. I am in, I'm in, I, I'm invested there, but I don't know if I'm invested just because I really like the down to earthness of these contemporaries. That's out of the way. Four and a half stars. Really enjoyed it. Had a good time. Do recommend it. And as for what I'm going to read at work, I don't know yet. I checked, I have a couple of things still checked out. I saw the plot checked out that I haven't listened to. I have that Sarah Shepard book that I haven't listened to yet. Um, but I also checked out, what was it? Uh, the Bloomsbury Girls by Natalie Jenner because Macmillan sent this book to me earlier in the year. <laughs> I asked for it. They sent it. And I haven't read it. <laughs> I haven't read it. Like, I... The reason I have to do, like, Buzzwordathon Arc Edition or last October when I did the Choose Your Own Adventure Arc Edition is because I just be having these arcs and they just be sitting there. Like, they just they just sit there. I they They were sent to me. I have them. The book comes out, I don't read it. But also, I, I did just because I had some extra time. I wanted to, like, dip my toes into the booktube is dying discourse, which I might make the title of this video, which doesn't feel too disingenuous because we're, like, the first clip in this little vloggy vlog. It's not like I'm asking you to wait until the end. Although I might revisit it when I'm doing my skincare tonight, depending on what book I read and how boring it is. But I don't... Here's the thing. <laughs> 
it's not that I think that booktube is dying so much as I think that YouTube is really having to come to terms with the fact that its algorithm is just not conducive to the to replicating what TikTok does. How do I how do I phrase this? But I do think that the reason that Book Talk is able to push books that were hyped on a different platform originally is because it is an emerging like if you were logging into TikTok during the pandemic and you hadn't read a book since high school, like let's be honest here. Of so this is the other issue I have with BookTube is that like to make BookTube content, you have to first search out bookish content. This is why I say it's all an algorithm game because you had to at some point in your life either be watching something that was bookish adjacent or have the interest in you to be suggested a book video and watch it. But if you're scrolling through your, you know, your TikTok page or whatever, your little For You page in the middle of the pandemic when all we were is trapped inside our houses and it was a dance video and then the next video it was like, hey, maybe you're going to like this this book person who's doing a dance and they're suggesting a book and you're like that sounds good and now all of a sudden because of that one book related video your entire for you page is covered in books it, it's going to it can pull you in in a way that youtube is just simply unable to do i have two separate youtube accounts i this one you're watching it on obviously is the one that i upload bookish content i try to use this account only to watch bookish content so youtube will suggest to me bookish content by people that i don't know when i go over to the recommended tab um and even there like it's it's very hit or miss it's still be trying to get me to watch an snl video or here's a demi lovato mix or whatever other suggested things so it's like if you were just like your for you page is your for you page like there's a reason when people are on the twitter and they're like oh i'm on emo grunge cottage core witch tiktok i'm like those sound like a collection of things that don't even make sense when they're like i'm on human bone collector tiktok i'm like that's the side of the tiktok they're like oh well, i'm on i'm on plant talk like there's a reason that you can find yourself siloed in these places because the algorithm actually pays attention to what you're watching and engaging with and i think that if you were in the middle of pandemic just actively not ever reading and you just fell down the rabbit hole of books of course you're going to be picking up books from 10 years ago because 10 years ago you weren't reading <laughs> you didn't read it 10 years ago you read it now so part of me is not really upset with backlist books being hyped on that platform and i'm not even upset that they are like the shiny new thing because it's never going to be for me i think that it's i think that what the real issue here <laughs> the real issue is that there was a there was a time on youtube where you could really get away with being really boring you could really get away with putting out a 15 minute video where you didn't really do anything you didn't really say anything you just kind of said hey i read this book there was a time on book two where you could get away with here's my most 20 recent books uh that i hauled i'm hauling 20 books today uh you could get away with this is what i'm gonna read in december and this is what i write in november and like that was it and you could just coast on through you could maybe put up a tag on a tuesday you could be a tag tuesday person you could maybe throw out a recommendation video you know a season or whatever um and now it's changed like the name of the game is no longer a 15 20 minute video in order for the YouTube algorithm to really fuck with you, you have to be consistent and it has to be long. It has to be consistent, it has to be long. And there are, and this is this is the why. <laughs> there was, I think there was a moment in BookTube where there was backlash to the reading vlog because the reading vlog was nobody reading. Like this is, the, this, to me, like this is the core issue with BookTube is that BookTube used to be about the books. Like... <laughs> It used to, like, it might be a Tag Tuesday, it might be a recommendation video, but at the end of the day, it was about a book. And the, to me, Book Talk is about the books. Like, that's where Book Talk is succeeding. When we're putting out, and I don't say we, but when, again, there was this air, there was this moment of time, and some people still do their reading vlogs like this. It won't be me, it can't be me. I don't see the aesthetic in mixing my coffee and walking a dog that I don't have. And like just strolling through my neighborhood and showing y'all where to come. No, sorry, don't need all those details. Don't need all those details about my life. But um, there when half the reading vlog be clips of B-roll with some royalty-free music, and then when you do update the book, you don't have anything to say. 
it's that, I think it's that, like, that very specific thing that gives the impression that BookTube is dying. Like, if you have an entire channel, and I, I understand that a lot of people have rebranded. A lot of people have rebranded, and I think it's very smart. I think it's very smart for you to rebrand and take books out, take library out, take reads out. Like, take all that shit out. Re, like, if what you are actually serving is general lifestyle content to rebrand, I think it's the smartest thing you can do because I do think that even if you, what you're putting out is just your life, if you're making lifestyle content, embrace it, embrace it. Because I do think that when you are setting up this expectation that what you're going to deliver is bookish content, you're going to be talking about a book, you're going to review a book, you're going to have thoughts and opinions about a book. And what we are getting is coffee shots, dog walking. This is my how I take care of my 37 plans, flip through a journal with me. That's why, that is that that makes it, to me, to me personally, is content like that, that has me feeling like the, it's dying. Because what it's not about the books anymore. Or your channel's not about the books anymore. And I do think there was a wave there where you could see a lot of these legacy creators re... They were trying to shake it up because I do think that... You also, from a reviewer perspective, I think that it's really easy to just, if you're no longer connecting with the person, to unsubscribe and move on, and your subscription feed will still be full of people talking about books, you know what I mean? But if what you, it, it's easy for you to move on as the viewer, but as the creator, if you've been at this for a year, two years, five years, eight years, and all you're doing is talking about the books, it does start to feel like a rat race, which is why I am very much looking forward to making 2023 the best year I can make it. And then after 2023 to, I want to say fully removing myself because I don't think that I'll ever fully go away from making book videos, but I do think that it will no longer be at the, I can't even say consistent because I can't, I, is there a time on book that I've really been consistent? But, um, at the, it will no longer be like a forefront of my mind type of uh, type of project for me. But I think that there does come a time where the rat race, <laughs> it's not worth running. It's not worth running the rat race anymore. And so to me, again, it's not so much that the, the platform is dying. I just feel like between the algorithm and people who have been doing this for forever, and now they are seeing that what they've been doing is no longer working... <laughs> Because the algorithm is shifting and changing. Uh, I can see how it's disheartening. I can see how it's disheartening. Because I do think that not everybody is built. Not everyone is built to one edit footage that is going to be an hour-long video. Not everyone is entertaining enough to, to have an hour-long video. Not everyone has things to say about every book they read. And some people don't read 300 books a year. 150 books a year, 100 books a year. Some, like, when you are reading 30 books a year, trying to figure out how to make engaging content every month, it's, a, again, it's part of the rat race. It's part of the rat race. I think that it's a lot easier. <laughs> Maybe it's not easier, because I don't make TikTok videos. But I think that I can understand why the YouTube burnout is real, when before, you know, reading 30 books a, a year and all you have to do is like, these are the books I want to read this month. This is what I actually read this month. That's fine. But now people want to see you every week. They want to see feature. I love a feature length. They want a good like 45 minutes, let's say, of content. Like it's not when the change is that drastic from going from eight minutes and now you want 45 minutes. That's a lot. That's a lot for some people. So I have to go. Uh, so I've rambled on a lot. So long story short, I don't think that YouTube is dying. I just think that one, the algorithm doesn't really incentivize you, the viewer, finding new people. It doesn't suggest people the way that TikTok does. I, you could scroll through BookTok and find like 12 different people in five minutes. You could type in December TBR and you might get three videos from the same person from three different years doing their December TBR. Like, you might not find 12 people if you actively search that, and let alone just click over to the recommended tab. So the the algorithms are, they're very different. And I think that one actually promotes you finding people and one of them promotes you not. Like, one of them promotes you 
it'll promote content from the same person. It'll promote my, like, at the, I watch my videos all the time. So at the end of my videos, I get suggested other videos by me, but I don't get suggested other, like, small black men making booktube videos. But I'm gonna go. I will check back in this evening to let you know how my reading goes, what I decided to pick up while I was at work. Um, so I'll see you, see you in the evening time. It's me in the little Westeros fireplace from HBO Max because I already washed my face. But <laughs> I read The Maid by Nita Prose today. Um, I actually forgot that I had this physical checked out for my library, but no worries. <laughs> no worries because I, um... I got the audiobooks. I listened to the audiobook while I was at work, and when I got home, and when I was showering, and when I was washing my face, and y'all, <laughs> what was this book? <laughs> which, like, which, between you and me, right? Like, let's let's get close here. Between you and me, what was this book? Like, this book was giving racism. It was giving a little ableist. It was giving, this is a joke, right? Like, who who at Good Morning America do I need to, who who do I need to write the letter to? Because Good Morning America, this was a joke, okay? <laughs> need a prose? This was a joke. Goodreads Choice Awards, Best Mystery? This was a joke, okay? Like, I, <laughs> I need a word with all of you. So let's, <sighs> let's rewind. Let's rewind because there's no clip of me in the car talking about this book so the maid by anita prose is the story of molly molly the maid i think her last name is like gray or something and she works at this boutique hotel in new york because she's a new yorker she's been there for 25 years so you find out she's 25 years old and she was raised by her grandmother who has passed away now y'all might be surprised to hear this but this is the second book today that i had to read where her grandma died so <laughs> that was fun for me so her grandmother is dead and one day molly goes to work and she discovers that one of the hotel guests mr black is dead and she's like oh no what is happening here mr black and through a series of unfortunate events it becomes apparent that the police are they're thinking molly did it they're thinking molly is the person that killed this man and it's not even so much a story of molly trying to clear her name it's a story of the reader seeing that all of these people are using the way that molly is naive against her so not but when, going into this i had seen some reviews that felt that molly had been coded as an autistic character or someone who has some neurodivergence i don't even know if it's just autism but she has some kind of uh neurodivergence and so she doesn't really pick up on social cues that often like she is a very literal individual which is a trait that i think is commonly associated with people who have autism spectrum whatever the current diagnosis is and so that's the thing that's happening here she's very i wouldn't call her na naive but she is a very literal person figures of speech like she can pick up on them eventually but at first she's very face value she's not getting the sarcasm she's not thinking you know it takes her a minute to read facial expressions you know it, she's that kind of a person and so the story is unfolding and characters are doing things around her that I think are very obvious to most readers, but it's presented as though Molly is just this naive dove in a world of pigeons that are out to get her. I don't even think that pigeons attack doves like that, but whatever the, the correct little allegory, metaphor, simile is for the situation. And it was very unpleasant to read. It was very, it, it felt very much just kind of like Nita Prose writing the most naive character. It was giving like this person can't really take care of themselves at times. Like they are so hyper fixated on their career as a maid. Like they, they were raised by a maid. Their grandmother was a maid. Um, they have like, a, it was giving kind of obsession in the way that Molly needed things to be clean. Like not only at work, but in her personal life. And there are scenes where she is in the, um, 
wherever they do interrogation, the interrogation room, uh, where she's being interrogated by the detective. And she's talking about, like, fucking how her grandma told her to chew 20 times or how there's a scuff mark on this wall or there's coffee rings on the table or how on the floor the linoleum is like scratched and things and how with a bottle of water she could just shine this to perfection it was giving foolish it was giving very foolish and then as the story goes on we're introduced to a character named uh one one michael was that his name one somebody one manuel and Juan Manuel is an undocumented Mexican immigrant who is being forced into do, like <laughs> forced into this drug trade that is, becomes part of the narrative. It's just foolish. It was giving it was giving racism. It was giving racism. This book right here, The Maid by Nita Prose. I don't know what it is about December and me finding like my worst books of the year. Yesterday in my dreams, I hold a knife was like one of the worst books I've ever read. And now we got the maid. Like <laughs> it was fine in terms of like there were some moments in this where I was like if this wasn't a library book and I wasn't listening and like the actual story was good I could understand like wanting to highlight I do think that Nita Prose had some good sentences I think that you can tell that Nita Prose works as an editor that she has spent time editing other people's sentences but she needed a better editor she needed a better agent she needed somebody in her corner that was going to tell her that this book was a little it was giving question. It was giving questionable, you know? And so I'm not surprised that this book would, would win a Goodreads Choice Award or be picked up by Good Morning America. But like, y'all, this book was bad. <laughs> it was bad. I was constantly questioning my faith in the book tonight. So <laughs> hate that for me. Hate that we're going out on this low, low note. But it's another book done. Another vlogmas vlog wrapped up i still have no idea what i'm gonna read tomorrow maybe i'll actually read bloomsbury girls or maybe i'll read something completely different there's gonna be a really hard cut there because uh my mic came unplugged but i'm happy because i was just it's really just the intro at this point right so i don't know what i'm gonna read tomorrow that's gonna be a problem for future monty but thank you for listening to my garbled discussion on the death of booktube my ranty rant about the maid i will see all of you back here again tomorrow for another book another discussion who knows but i'll see you then